There are now 23 candidates in the 2020 presidential race, and among them is California Congressman Eric Swalwell. At 38, he is one of the youngest candidates running in the Democratic primary and has made gun control the key issue of his campaign. I spoke to Congressman Swalwell yesterday about his run for the presidency. So why should voters support a four-term congressman from the state of California for president of the United States? Well, first, I know how hard people work and what they expect to add up to. I was the first in my family to go to college. I have two kids under two. I'm paying off my student loans. And so I see that promise of America for many Americans broken, which is you work hard, you do better, dream bigger. But I've been in the Congress on the Intelligence Committee as our democracy has been on the ropes. And I've stood firmly uh, for the rule of law. I've gone to the war zones. I've met with foreign leaders. I've taken the classified briefing. So on day one, I'll be ready uh, to know who we need as friends in this world and who uh, the threats are. But also just to bring generational optimism that I think is needed. Fresh ideas on the issues of health care, education access, and of course, uh, the centerpiece of our platform, uh, being safe in your schools and reducing gun violence. You have emphasized youth, and you yeah. are 38 years old. Uh, there is one candidate, though, who's younger, yes. and that's Pete Buttigieg, who's... He's too young to run. 37. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but he's got executive yeah. experience. Yes, he's been the yeah. mayor of a small city yeah. in Indiana. Why yeah. Why are you more qualified? No, I, I like Mayor Pete. I, there's, you know, Tulsi Gabbard and Seth Moulton, others right. uh, who are in this millennial uh, generation. I believe that it's being connected to everyday folks, knowing why they work hard through my working class roots. It's the optimism that I can bring, believing that healthcare cures uh, is a way, not just coverage, but seeking cures to bring down costs, and having uh, a college bargain. So if you go to college, do work study, serve a community that needs it when you get out, it adds up to a debt-free education. And then finally, again, that experience of being day one ready, while our democracy has gone into this deep, dark hole, I'm on the Judiciary Committee. I'm on the Intelligence Committee. We're not rolling the dice on someone who doesn't know how the federal government works, as we did with this last president. I want to come to that issue of gun control. Uh, you are making it a, a centerpiece uh, of your campaign, but you do have other candidates in yeah. the race who've been on this issue for years. Yeah. Joe Biden worked for years yeah. on a... On a anti-crime bill, Kamala Harris, uh, yeah. uh, it, her work in California. She's talking about using executive authority. How are your views, in a nutshell, different from all the others? Well, I was a prosecutor. I worked in Oakland as a prosecutor, so I saw what gun violence does to our cities. I went to Chicago uh, yesterday, similar uh, issues there. So from the cities to the suburbs to the rural areas, it's access to firearms, it's investing uh, in mental health services in our schools. And my, I'm the only candidate who's calling for a ban and buyback of the 15 million assault rifles that are on our streets uh, today. I came to Congress when Sandy Hook happened and was demoralized as we went from mass shooting to mass shooting. I sat for 26 hours on the floor after Orlando uh, in protest. So I want to seize the momentum that these moms and the students and community activists have done to take out 17 NRA endorsed members of Congress. I want to seize it and negotiate up, not down. on on policies on gun violence. And you think this is an issue that can galvanize voters? I ask because in the past, uh, it, it hasn't It hasn't yeah. seemed to be something that gets voters uh, energized enough to, to vote one way or another. I was in Fairfield, Iowa, a very rural community uh, earlier this week. I did a gun violence town hall. Over 125 people showed up. And I asked a woman, I said, I know why I'm here, this issue I care about a lot. But in this safe community, why are you here? And she said, because we don't want a shooting to happen at our church. It's also about our kids. You know, I took my son uh, to his preschool orientation uh, last week, and I thought about something I didn't have to think about when I was going to school, which is, is he safe in this building? And so this issue uh, of safety in our schools and our churches uh, and the places we gather, it's top of mind now for the voters. Now I'm going to turn the, turn the corner now and ask you about something that's on a lot of people's minds, and certainly farmers and others in business around this country, and that is the trade war with China. You've said you don't think the trade war is beneficial, but again, what would you do differently uh, from, from what President Trump is doing specifically? Would you go back to the Obama-Biden yeah. trade policy? Uh, I'd form a class action. You know, we're in a significant trade deficit with China today. Going one-on-one -on -one with them in a trade war is ineffective, and the way the president is prosecuting it is incompetent. They're a bad actor on intellectual property, on dumping steel, on manipulating currency. That's not the issue. The issue, though, is can you band together with Australia and Japan and South Korea, other victims of what China is doing, to prosecute the case against them? Our president has alienated us from our traditional allies. I would know who our friends are and go to them to make the chase, case against China, to protect our farmer, to protect our steel workers, to protect our intellectual uh, innovators.
and and uh, on a subject that uh, is on the minds of Democrats and Republicans yeah. right now, and that is impeachment. I think it was just yeah. a few nights ago you said in an interview that President Trump is giving Congress no option. But if Speaker Pelosi is right, what she's saying, it's better to wait, see, you know, when you get the facts, let's keep studying this, let's keep trying to, to gather information. Do you believe that she is inevitably going to have to change her position on that and, and that there will be impeachment proceedings? Yeah, I, I don't really question the wisdom of Speaker Pelosi. Uh, she's been in these fights before. I think she sees where this is going. I think we're on a road to impeachment. And she, like myself, believes that you have to exhaust all other remedies to show the American people you're following the rule of law, that we're not going to do Donald Trump justice. The first remedy was the American people. They voted him in. We respected that. Then we put a balance of power on his abuses of power in the midterms. He has not respected that. He's outnumbered. The subpoena power and the courts are on our side, but I think he's backing us into the only other remedy that's the most extraordinary remedy, which is impeachment. But I want to make sure we do everything else first before we get there. I think we're pretty close. Do you think uh, you're giving in some way the president a boost uh, as Democrats, if it, the more there is even talk about impeachment, much less moving to impeachment. I, I, honestly, I try not to think about it that way because that means I'm not looking at the evidence. And the evidence is you have a lawless president who is telling his uh, administration officials not to comply with the law. He's been characterized as a double-digit obstructor in the Mueller report. No one's above the law in this country. No one could get away with what he's getting away with. And that's what I have to focus on. Speaking of President Trump, finally, you said when you announced that you have family members, I believe your yeah. own parents, yeah. who are supporters of President Trump. They have a magnet yeah. on the refrigerator in the kitchen that's right. that says Trump Pence. Is that magnet yeah. still there? I, I hope it's not. Uh, I, I may <laughs> have to go into the voting booth uh, with my parents, you know, if, if I make it to the general uh, election. Uh, but my parents, I would say, are a strong Ronald Reagan Republicans and I was raised, you know, in the 80s, and they wanted us to be strong in the world uh, and not waste the taxpayers' dollars. And I think I can win over people like my parents. Uh, I was born in the Midwest, have that, you know, fiscal prudence, American values, and we see a president who has just racked up debt with tax cuts for the wealthiest and has alienated us in the world and has drawn us closer to Vladimir Putin than he has to the Brits and the Australians and people that we need. I think these never Trumper voters are going to need a place to go, and the son of Reagan Republicans might be that candidate. But you don't have any doubt your parents would vote for you. <laughs> they will vote for me, yes. Day. Yes, of, of course they will. But uh, my wife's also from southern Indiana. And, you know, we just did an Indiana town hall over the weekend in Columbus, Indiana, and, you know, saw hundreds of people show up there, uh, many Republicans. So uh, born in Iowa, married to a Hoosier, educated in the South, elected in a diverse part of California. I can add states in the general election. Congressman Eric Swalwell running for the Democratic nomination. We thank you. Thank you, Judy.